I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is your quick look at the stories we covered this week that you need to read. Web-based events are quickly becoming an important way for resource investors to connect with experts in the space. This week, INN sat in on a webinar from Grit Capital that featured major names in mining, including Ross Beatty. He shared his thoughts on the commodities that he likes right now, as well as the ones he's not a fan of. Unsurprisingly, his favorites are gold and silver, which he said have fabulous fundamentals. He's also bullish on copper, which he said is fundamentally an energy metal. Beatty is less optimistic about commodities like oil, which he said he would stay miles away from, and thermal coal, which he believes is falling by the wayside due to climate change requirements. While precious metals have been in the spotlight lately, uranium is also starting to gain some traction. The industry has suffered from low prices since the Fukushima nuclear disaster in 2011, but market watchers are starting to see some glimmers of hope due to mine closures caused by COVID-19. The latest news came this week when Kazatomprom announced that measures taken to prevent the spread of the virus will reduce its uranium output this year by 4,000 tons. Speaking to INN, Lobo Tigre of Louis James LLC said that while there's huge price potential for uranium, mine closures are not the only catalyst the sector needs. He also wants to see long-term contract offers at much higher prices. In line with that theme, we asked our Twitter followers this week if the recent mine closures and slowdowns in uranium will finally send prices higher. The poll was ongoing at the time of this recording, but over 50% of respondents had said that it's the catalyst uranium needs to break out of its long rut. We'll be asking another question on Twitter next week, so make sure to follow us and share your thoughts. Like most industries, cannabis continues to grapple with the coronavirus outbreak. So far, much of the impact has been felt at brick-and-mortar stores, which in the U.S. and Canada are facing different COVID-19 restrictions depending on where they're located. Ontario is one area that's faced a stream of changes. For example, last week it adjusted its definition of essential businesses and told brick-and-mortar cannabis stores in the province that they would have to shut down. This came after they had operated for a number of weeks without issue. Ontario turned the situation on its head again this week, allowing stores to operate using online and phone ordering systems. The move was partially geared at shutting out black market sales. That's all for this week. Tune in again next week when we tell you more about what's going on in the resource and cannabis spaces. In the meantime, you can follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or click below for our free report or any article mentioned in this video. See you next time.